Good evening, everybody. I bring this uh, regular meeting of uh, council to order for October the 17th, 2023. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio is absent tonight. Result of the agenda for the October 17th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor um, Bobic. All in favor? It's carried. <coughs> Three, result of the minutes of the October 4th, 2023 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving right down to 6, 6.1, result of the communications from the Royal Canadian Legion dated October the 2nd, 2023 and the Manitoba Crime Stoppers dated October the 9th, 2023, be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Go ahead. I think uh, November the 11th, uh, hopefully Council would consider uh, taking part in that very important activity. Uh, those people died so we can live the life we do and considering the rest of the rest of the world well, I just think it's important that Council uh, attend the Remembrance Day ceremony. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Point two result of the building permits 5623 through 5923 with a total estimated value of $132,000 be received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk, or I'm sorry, Bobic. Discussion? Councillor Bobic. I just see uh, RTM homes here. You need a permit for that. Is that not inventory? Uh, no, they're building them on a, on a piece of property in town, so they have to have a permit. It's a, it's a different permit than okay, the okay, building. Okay. Yeah, uh, the RTM, the RTM the permit. And okay. Permit. okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Powell and Councillor Medford. Does, how, there's two of them there. Are they building two there? Is that what the... Yeah? That's correct. Okay. Yeah, they build them on site and then... Then they move them. Okay. Move them. Um, is it just me, or did we miss 6.12 for the Manitoba Crime Stoppers signage letter? Uh, it's all part of that one okay. in 6.1. 6.1.2. 6.1.2. Six one like 6.1 resolution? <laughs> Covered both of them. Oh, okay. The okay. format is different. We, no, for a time, we were accepting every piece of correspondence, but uh, I'm putting them all together in one resolution. But I'll still list them as sub items. So on the building permits, Councillor White. I don't think it's all one and the same. You've got a 6.11 and you've got a 6.12. There are two separate entities on this agenda. That's correct. But in 6.1, the resolution to receive communications, <laughs> if you look, it covers the Royal Canadian Legion and Manitoba Crime Stoppers, so just which just are those items below in 6.12 and 6.11 where you see the letters but let's go back to 6.2 any further discussion on the building permits okay all in favor it's carried <coughs> seven seven point one result of the director of public works report be received moved by councillor medwood second by councillor powell discussion all in favor? It's carried. 7.2. Result of the September the 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Council reports. Uh, Councilor Bobic. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I 
the 10th, attended the cow meeting. I also met with the Legacy Committee that evening, which was a very good conversation, so I like the direction they're headed. Also attended the fire board meeting with the signing at the fire hall. It was really good speeches on behalf of the town of Fond River. Mayor Jacobs did an excellent job, and along with Reed Bate, I am really impressed with the comments that were made there. Also, I have a meeting with the Swan Lake Watershed Thursday and 17th, just to kind of give you an update on what they're doing. Uh, you'll see in front of you have the current magazine on page 29. There's a, there's a, about the Swan River Watershed and our water festival that was held, just if you want to do some reading. Just briefly, Swan Lake Watershed is uh, now taken under 1,700 acres in the grow program, which protects the uh, wetlands and stuff like that, and the high risk areas, where, for example, potholes, creek beds, shelter belts. The grow program probably brings in around $500,000. The Ag Action Program is around $81,000. That's probably to do with uh, nitrogen management, cross fencing, and stuff like that. Uh, other grow projects, which were more uh, riparian things, are $25,000. And the PWPC, which is a climate action thing, which would have to do with nitrogen uh, cover crops and sort of like that, brings in $570,000. Our annual budget uh, for our starting is $300,000, which is $225,000, which comes from the province, and $75,000 from our municipal partner. So, and when an invest all settles, approximately $1.5 million has been invested in the valley through the watershed. So I give a hats off to that. In the conversation with them, I guess uh, uh, the watershed is interested in, if the town is interested in a rain garden, so that would be something I'll talk with the staff in the near future and see if that's something we want to put on the agenda. So a rain garden is more like a, a small forest that collects rainwater, snow runoff, stuff like that, and absorbs it. So that's something they could be looked into. And that's about it. All right. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Medwood. Uh, well, I attended the... <coughs> Town meeting as well as a uh, communities at care meeting on the 10th. Had a services for seniors meeting today, and tomorrow I have the CSWB meeting at it's one o'clock, right? Yeah. One o'clock. Perfect. And uh, yeah, that's uh, about it for council. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council White. Yeah, on uh, Thursday the 5th, I had the, uh, the pleasure to represent the mayor at the Elbert Shelter and Fetcher Center AGM. And every time I go there, I'm amazed at the, uh, the litany of wonderful things they do for our community, from looking after the homeless, the helpless, educating all, all groups. And uh, they have, for example, they have 39, 399 houses they manage. Uh, it's just always revealing for me, and in talking to the director, Kim Monroe, I said, gee, you know, maybe you guys would like to come down and do a presentation to council, all the wonderful things you do. I said, we would do that, but he says, why don't you ask council to come to the Friendship Center, go one day at noon, do a half hour, two, half hour tour, and then lunch. So I sow that seed with our council. Uh, I think you'll find it very, very revealing and uh, encouraging to see the things that they do. So, uh, Director Poole, I'd ask you to maybe uh, send one of those monkey things out where who's the, what's the best day to go and for the most of us for a tour of the Friendship Center. And I'm sure Tanya would be a good negotiator there for us. And I'm wondering, we'll have some wonderful food at lunch. Tanya makes great bannock. Uh, then uh, at the cow, and, and it, we talked a lot about the legacy group, uh, the, the team that's uh, raising funds in, in a more immediate sense for the arena, but will also be raising funds for things in the future, not just the arena. And Councillor Wojciech was a wonderful leader there. They're still looking for volunteers, or if people out there in TV land would like to volunteer to join the Legacy Group, there's some stuff on uh, Facebook right now about that, or contact Councillor Wojciech, I'm sure. We did the fire hall on the 12th. It was, uh, it was so nice to see the valley uniting uh, with Swan Valley West and the town of Swan River and also participation from the North and Benito also present at that meeting with all the councillors. So uh, what a compliment to that team who made that happen. Then today at 6 p.m. I had the uh, medical services meeting, the immigrant services meeting rather, 
and again a bunch of motivated men and women trying to help uh, people in our community. Immigration services is a broad spectrum. They do so much to help people settle in. And one of the things they talked a lot about was retaining. You know, the, the recruiting part, they do, but retaining people who want to stay in our valley for things like potluck dinners they do. So uh, I have a special bond with the immigrant service people. They do wonderful work in our town. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Councillor Boychuk. Um, well, echoing some of the same uh, meetings, uh, fifth, we had the Chamber of Commerce <coughs> meeting. Um, that's moving along nicely with the uh, camera project and the community patrol vehicle. On the 10th, we had the CAL meeting with the Swan Valley Legacy Committee, which again was uh, very productive and very positive. Um, it's, it's going very nicely and I can't wait to uh, get to the finish line with it because um, I think it's going to be pretty uh, spectacular what uh, this group and the town can do. Uh, also, again, the fire board uh, signing and then we did the inaugural meeting afterwards. Uh, I have to thank Deputy Mayor Morio for spearheading that development of the framework for the board. Um, put a lot of hours and time into that. Um, and then the Swan Valley Planning District meeting uh, we had uh, just last night and we've chosen an agency for the development plan. And just with, with everything between like the Legacy Committee, the Fire Board, Swan Valley Planning District, again, echoing uh, Councillor uh, White's sentiments there. It's just great news moving forward as a valley, um, one unit. Um, there's a lot of different fronts and uh, very exciting and promising and, and positive things happening in the community. So that is it for me. Thank you. Councillor Powell. Um, yeah, well, I think everything's been pretty much mentioned, um, but um, yeah, we did attend the G8, which was really great to you know, be with everybody and get a little bit of views from everybody. Um, we attended the CAL, um, I guess the only, um, yeah, the fire hall meeting as well, which is really great to see such a, you know, that's like moving forward and uh, I think that brings lots to our community and together, working together. Um, we attended a couple library meetings and um, tomorrow we have Swan Valley Interagency meeting. Oh. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I guess for myself, first of all, I'd like to thank Council White for attending the uh, Friendships Albert Chartrand Friendship Center at AGA. Uh, thank you for doing that. Um, also, uh, with the fire department amalgamation that we had last Thursday, um, I echo the words of Councillor uh, Boychuk as far as uh, Deputy Mayor Morio uh, stepping up and, and doing a lot of that uh, legwork and uh, we're really grateful of that and, and also our new partnership with Swan Valley West. Um, great crowd there, Mem members of our fire department from Swan Valley West and also from Mountain and the town of Swan River as well as uh, members from the Fire Commission team as well. So that was really good to see and, mm -hmm. and uh, great uh, get off the ground, I guess, so to speak, uh, uh, first meeting that we have. And our new chairperson, or first chairperson, I guess we can say, is, is Deputy Mayor Morio. So we're glad that he's taken on that role uh, with the, uh, I guess, the deputy, if you want to say, or the, the co-chair, or not the co-chair. Vice chair. The vice chair, sorry, thank you as uh, Reed Gay. So uh, we're moving ahead and gonna you know, find a fire chief and get this rolling along. Also that night, um, uh, the uh, uh, award went to 20 years of service to Captain Samard. So congratulations to him and thank him for all the service that he's done uh, for 20 years. I can't believe it's been 20 years. I remember when he uh, first started doing that role. Yeah, he's there at 23 now, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, but he did get his 20, yeah, he'll be soon ready for his 25-year pin, I guess, so. But uh, no, all the way around, it was really good, and, and everybody else mentioned all the other things that have been going on, so I mean, it's been somewhat busy, but uh, moving along, it's fall time and getting ready for other things, so. Um, moving on then to uh, the CAO's report. We do have a written report for council if they have any questions, just to update uh Update you, myself and Director Closen attended asset management training yesterday in Dauphin through the AMM. <clears throat> uh, 
preparing for our new clerical staff edition for Monday. Uh, public surveys went out for the parking bylaw and the accommodation tax. So we'll, once we get that information back, we'll provide uh, that info for council. Uh, and we're advertising our grant bylaw and FOQ or FAQ. Uh, it's on the website, and letters uh, have been sent to the annual recipients. Uh, and what I need from council is just a discussion on the AMM to make sure everyone's clear on departure times and if anyone's interested in the tour prior to the convention. Uh, and then an invitation, we've received an invitation to the Swan Valley School Division strategic planning session to send reps uh, to that November 14th. And so it will be the full day. But uh, the loose, I need to know. Yeah, we have the three already. You already have three? Yeah, okay, three already. Yeah. yeah. I've already told them that. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, relative to the community of practice meeting, what's that about? Uh, that is the CMNCPs, I can't remember that acronym, the, the consultant that the province has hired. They have community practice meetings that basically update all of the 12 municipalities that were selected for the pilot project for the crime. So it's, it's just a, a really broad general update and discussion on where things are going with the, the individual municipalities. That's something you will attend. <clears throat> I will be there, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councilman Edward. Uh, did the date for the uh, Swan Valley Ag Society meeting change, or is that a typo? You've got it for October 23rd, which is a Monday. Oh, that should say the uh, October 24th. Okay, yeah. I just wanted yeah. to double yeah. check that. Oh, okay. And same with the um, unsightly bylaw amendment. We've got that. That's meant to be for with the cow. Yeah, October okay. 24th. Apologize. Not a problem. And the October 26th, the Connection Zone RMED event at the Swan River Council Chambers. What's that? That is an update for RMED's, uh, I guess, what they're doing or what they're planning to do next year. But it really is more of a, a just a, a networking connection meeting that RMED wanted to do in Swan River. So we've sent it out to all the CAOs and, and uh, we'll even go further to Ethelbert and Gilbert if they want to, Roblin if they want to come up for that. I know Charlene is, uh, is connecting with them and trying to get as many people as possible. Okay, so it's more of a CAO thing, not a council thing? No, elected officials. So anyone who's interested in economic development on the provincial level, what ARMED is doing, things like that. Uh, and, and like I say, it, it really, the way Charlene put it, it's really for us to connect and, and talk about what works, what isn't working, what we would like to do, things like that, how the parkland can work better together. When those dates uh, are close to arrival, would you send a note out to the councillors and remind us? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? <clears throat> No, that's it. Sir. Council, does have any other questions? Okay. Then we shall move on. Uh, eight, eight point one. Whereas on April the twenty eighth, two thousand twenty three, the town of Swan River signed a memorandum <coughs> of understanding with the Swan Valley Legacy Incorporated as a foundation document to get a joint final joint venture development agreement and whereas the two parties continue to work together to, uh, sorry work towards a joint venture development agreement uh, together for the purpose of providing ice surface services for the citizens of the town or for the Swan River Valley and whereas the town of Swan River alongside the Swan Valley Legacy Committee have applied and been approved for provincial funding of over $3 million towards eligible expenses including pre-construction costs and whereas the Town of Swan River and the Swan Valley Legacy Committee require further information to make informed decisions to determine the scope of the arena project. Therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Swan River commit $500,000 from the Canada Community Building Fund Reserve 
to the pre-construction costs of the project. <coughs> Be it further resolved, the individual expenses and approvals thereof be in accordance with the final joint venture development agreement between the Town of Swan River and the Swan Valley Legacy Committee. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. You got a question? No? Okay. Carried. 8.2. Result of the town of Swanover purchased a stump, gr stump grinder from Rough Country Ag for $11,500 plus applicable taxes. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor uh, Medwood. Discussion? Councillor White. Uh, taking the apples and oranges, I, I, the prices are all similar, but I'm assuming they all do the same job equally well. Yeah, yeah, so they all have a arm that swings out, rotating disc, um, <clears throat> so we can set up the uh, skid steer on the boulevard, because a lot of them are on the boulevard, and then I can just swing back and forth, grind the stump down. So we have a backlog of existing stumps, uh, so that'll help out, because the suckers that are coming out of them, then we won't have to deal with those anymore, because they always bush out wider than the stump, so can be an issue with visibility and then anytime we take down a tree then we could be right on top of it and then uh, at the old cemetery there's some stumps that are left behind so we can grind those down so it'll make it look even nicer over the cemetery. So, so you're optimistic removing this stump will stop the suckering? Yeah because then you mow it if anything comes up. Oh you can mow it because you'll still sucker. Yeah. Okay. And that, uh, right. Thank you. Yep. I got you then. Uh, Councilor Powell. I'm just wondering how, like, how many a year do you normally? Is it quite a few stumps in a year? Maybe. It could be like anywhere between ten to thirty, kind of depending on the trees that die and the Dutch elm disease trees. Okay. And I guess maybe just for curiosity. What would your cost of renting a device like that be, roughly? Uh, if we were renting a device for each one, we'd probably spend about two thousand dollars a year, kind of thing, to three thousand. Okay. Whereas this will have it uh, right uh, for multiple years. Okay. For the discussion, Councilor Balvik. Well, I guess we could mention also mention the Legion Park too. There's quite a few to be done down there and stuff like that. And with the rental part of it, I I tend to disagree. I think it'd be a lot more money than that by renting and the availability. These people don't really have them here. I would take. I don't know if Flamens have one. I'm just using them as an example. But these are not something that's normally kept on hand. So it would be at the time you would need it. It probably wouldn't be here. So. Right. <clears throat> For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 10, 10.1. Result of the, the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30809 to number 30870, totaling $216,077.22 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll accounts checks number 5374 to 5377, totaling $96,913.51 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit payments totaling $17,897.95 as listed on Schedule C. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, <coughs> seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion, uh, Councillor uh, Medwin. Uh, line uh, 30. 837 Northern Knights window cleaning 41,286.36. It says library reconstruction to be covered by insurance. Can we explain that a little bit more? Elaborate? You mean um, the insurance part? Well, all of it, I guess, because that's a lot of money. Yeah, the, the library is covered under the town's insurance, so there was a claim put in and the way that insurance works is you renovate and get reimbursed. So we submit this expense to the insurance company for reimbursement. So, 
So this includes more than just window cleaning? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Nor Northern Lights Window is, is actually a company that does a lot of restoration as well. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, they did all the flooring in there too. They did they did repair out all the carpeting and we did all the new carpet in there and then anything moved all the books and everything like that. There's a whole pile in there, not just okay. not just the window. Okay, no, that's good. That's good. Okay, for the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Ten point two. Result of financial statements for the nine months ending September the 30th, 2023, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion? Councillor Bobek. I asked a question about percentages, and I know they're all here, uh, but I guess my question is uh, I'll pick one here. If you have repair and maintenance and you've got 49%, I guess my question was what hasn't been spent, but do you, I know it's a hard number to figure out, but what's left to do, are we within the percentages? If you only got 100% of money, so if you've spent 50%, but you got 70% more to do, how does that work? So, the percentage so I guess if you're picking on one, like if you're, yeah, I just let's one. let's pick one with maybe if Mr. Put Mr. Harvey there. on the on the spot and you can ask him and then he'd be able to answer you whether or not whatever that is left in that department has enough funds in the in the remainder percentages would be enough there to cover exactly, off what yeah, would yeah, be exactly, left to be yeah. done. Yeah. yeah, so that's where the four and I talk back and forth and it's like, okay, we have more money left in uh, tree removal, so we can spend more time doing tree removal. We've used up the budget on sidewalks, so let's not do anything more on sidewalks unless we have to. There's a few that'll go over some comes up, but we kind of steer uh, towards the accounts that have budget left. Like, we plan for that, but we do okay. a little bit of steering just to try and keep it uh, and then from going too far over. Yeah, I guess you're playing the Peter yeah. uh, from Peter to Bay Paul yeah. scenario. Is there is there any way that quarterly or something you can advise council that, you know, we're within budgets or you know, everything's looking good before we make some decisions on buying stump grinders or something? Where are we as a as a year end sort of deal? Like, used up as our total budget have we used up 80 percent or is there some way to do that go ahead i guess the stealth grinder was a capital item yeah yeah so that would have that's passed in the financial plan and has you know you guys have given us money to purchase that so within that that its own budget so if there's i think the question can be answered with if there's something in operating that is going to be big we do, you know, the managers do have to take a look at how much money they have left. Say if there's a project or a purchase that's coming in November and they see that they are over on some accounts due to weather or anything, whatever it is, they may have to postpone that and, and inform council at budget time that that did not happen because maybe it was budget, maybe it was... Yeah, so say like in the tree trimming, if there was money left in the materials, then it's like, okay, the chainsaws are getting old, so we can pick up a new chainsaw. If it's getting to the end of the year and it's right at 100%, then okay, this isn't the year that we can do that because we had to spend it on other items, so we'll have to push that till next year kind of thing. And I understand that, yeah, and I appreciate that, but I, what I'm saying is how do we get that information? Where are we within our budget throughout the year? Yeah, I guess you guys receive that monthly, so you get to see that we're in transportation. We're seventy point eight, we, you know, seventy point eight through our expense budget. So it's seventy point eight of the work done. Yeah, like certain ones, like snow clearing, obviously only happens in the winter. Certain ones do go all throughout the year. Um, so it kind of varies depending on 
I get, I'd say overall we're around that percentage done, but each line item, it kind of depends what it is. You know, flushing a large section of that budget gets used up when we're flushing kind of thing. Trees get used up later on in the year. Uh, so it kind of depends on where in the year we are as to what we're working on, what budgets we're uh, spending. And, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that, you know, like, there may be some overspending, but there also comes to me to know that, you know, while we did some savings here, maybe we should be purchasing this and we should be purchasing that. So I mean, that's something yeah. to look at it both ways here. So. Yeah. I think I, I understand where you're going. It'd be helpful if we had a report of sort of data points of we prepared this much curb this year, but we yeah. didn't do, we, you know, we, we swept the town three full times this year. And maybe I, one year it's six just, times. Just a reminder that your time has expired, but you want to comment. One more question. Comment. So, so and, I, and, I, and again, my <laughs> suggestion of three years quarterly doesn't mean that you know, I'm spring and fall over. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.3. Whereas sections 326 of the Municipal Act provides that the municipality may impose supplementary taxes, and subsections 306 and 306.1 provide that a municipality may cancel or reduce taxes upon receipt of assessment alterations for Manitoba Assessment Services. Therefore, be it resolved that the assessment alterations provided by Manitoba Assessment Services on October the 6th and 12th, 2023, be made to the 2023 property and business tax rolls with a resulting increase of $852.20 and the resulting reduction of $37.24. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 10.4. Whereas the town of Swan River used municipal equipment, materials, and labor to carry out private works on private property under the Municipal Act Clause 252E and set the fees and charges for the works under Clause 252A of the Act, and whereas sufficient time has been allowed to, uh, for payment of such outstanding amounts as listed on the attached Schedule A totaling $2,664.77. Therefore, be it resolved that each of the unpaid amounts listed on Schedule A be added to the corresponding property tax roll and collected in that matter under subsections 252.2 of the Act, and be it further resolved that notice be sent to each property owner detailing the amounts being added to the taxes and advising that interest will accrue on the set amounts in the same manner as for unpaid property taxes, effective November the 1st, 2023. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? Just to clarify, these are all invoices that were sent out to the property owners. They've had they're allotted time to pay and they haven't? Yeah. yeah. Further discussion? Councillor Bobbick? So I see just security fences there for rental. Are we renting, still renting the, the fences? Like we haven't looked at purchasing security fences yet? No. You, you mean you're talking about like in the future having a security fence for sales? Yeah. That may be something that can be talked about in the budget for next year. So could that be something that we could have a number on how much we've spent on security fencing over the years? If you ask that, you could probably get that information. Okay. Yep, thank you. Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And it looks to me that that is the it. So members privilege. Let's start with Councillor Powell. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, no, not, not a heck of a lot, other than um, just to, uh, as always, um, you know, quite a few things happening. We have this Swan Valley Outdoors Association happening this weekend, which will be, uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully, we can get a sell out there. Um, we also have the Community Foundations coming up on the 17th, as well as uh, the Swan Valley Legacy um, has theirs on the 7th, November the 7th, which is going to be their family feud, which are 
tickets are selling very fast and it's going to be a great time. So I think, I know it's a big, heavy next few weeks to support lots of, uh, lots of things, but hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody can take in as much as they can. Yeah, you're right. Councilor White. Well, November, November 17th is the Community Foundation Dinner and they support everything throughout the Valley, so it be wonderful for us to be able to support them. And November the 21st, this Saturday, is the uh, fifth annual Swan Valley Outdoors Dinner. I think we spent $150,000 in the community already. Zero leaves the valley. It's a much easier product to sell for us. So, yeah, tickets are starting to go now. They're pretty slow at the beginning, but moving quite well now. Councilor, Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Councilor Medwood. Uh, the Services for Seniors did a trade show on September 23rd. They had a good turnout. It's the first time they've done one. So they had some speakers from Lung Association, uh, I believe Heart and Stroke and or Alzheimer's, as well as a few uh, uh, trade booths up there from local uh, local uh, business owners and whatnot. So that went pretty well for being the first time. I have the COPP AGM coming up this Saturday, so I won't be attending your outdoors dinner, but I do need to reach out to Patty because I have a contribution for the raffle. Um, and I think that might be about it. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Bobic. Thank you, Your Worship. A uh, couple quick questions here. Just where are we with the back alley between 8th and 9th? Between 8th and 9th. Yeah. Like cook and cook, and we'll cook. or was anything moving uh, forward? I should bring that back to the okay. next cow for discussion. Yep, okay. and also, uh, turning in off of number 10 into the co-op service station, I know there's uh, lots of students crossing there, and there seems to be some real roughage there. I hate to see somebody twist an ankle in front of a car turning. Is that highways we would talk to? Yeah, I'll take a look. Put an iron in it. Depending on where it is, it's kind of between. That was by uh, the co-op, you said? Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to check if it's there or okay. ours. Uh, just to speak a little bit on the accommodation taxes coming up here, am I under the impression, or I guess my impression of the accommodation tax, I, I do believe in it that the town of Swan River should move forward on that, but at the same time, the selling point of this thing should be that those taxes go to recreation. People that come to stay in our town are using our recreation facilities, and that's the idea behind that. So I hopefully in the resolution, resolution, it would state that that is, goes directly to recreation. So my thoughts on that. Also, uh, Ride for a Reason and the Lions were invited to the Senior Center to give us some coffee and donuts and uh, show their appreciation for the Ride for a Reason uh, donated $4,000 and the Lions donated $3,500 to the Senior Center and they were very, very happy and glad to see the community support. Well, I really think that uh, members' privilege time is a really good idea. I don't know who brought it up. But it's, it's <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Whitechuck. Well, uh, to kind of regurgitate, I guess, what everybody else has said, I have some tickets if anyone wants for the uh, cash draw for the uh, Legacy Committee Family Feud Night. Um, they are going to do tickets even if you can't be there. You can purchase tickets to support in any event so I know it's it's a busy night for us so I've got our tickets hopefully we can be there and uh, I know some of the members from the detachment have purchased some tickets and they're just excited about the uh, hot dog bar so they're hoping that their shift will allow them to pop in and snag a hot dog or two. Free so, hot dogs? Yeah it's got oh, a hot dog bar cool there. Yeah so uh, and also if you want those support tickets you can get them at the Albert Charter and Friendship Center or Star and Times. And that's it for my community service announcement. Okay, perfect. Yeah, the next month or month and a half is going to be very, very busy with all these sorts of fundraisers. So hopefully they all do very well because mm -hmm. they all go to good uh, uh, good, uh, good things. Go ahead. Sorry, maybe I missed this, but what date was that fundraiser? Just so it's... Uh, the Family Feud Arena fundraiser is uh, on November 4th. Thank you. Okay, perfect. I'm not going to go over all the stuff that it was already gone over already, but just uh, in the last couple of weeks, I was able to attend the, the No Frills grand opening, uh, mm -hmm. Galen and Dylan's uh, really nice new store, and 
uh, a good addition to the community and uh, it's all good with, as far as competition and all that goes. I think mm -hmm. that it just uh, makes it a little bit more attractable. So I know that he said that they had a lot of people from like not necessarily in town in, in their store too. So mm -hmm. I'm sure that they'll uh, attract other people to our community as well. So it's a win-win situation. So And plus I have new neighbors too, so that's a good thing. Go ahead. And relative to no frills, mm -hmm. amongst all the other corporate people, in the they have donated a sizable item to the Sunday of the Outdoors dinner, and they bought tickets for our dinner also. So uh, it looks like they're going to be good community supporters, yeah. joining the rest of them. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you. Oh, I guess I missed you guys. Go ahead. I just have a, I do have an update from Pip Plato uh, regarding our agreement. If we want to lay the agenda, does have uh, motions to go in and out of camera if we yeah. have to do that camera. Oh, you forgot to have that? I did forget that. We, we, we'll finish this, then we'll go back, we'll go into camera, and, and then you can do that, and then we'll come back out. Yeah. Okay, but do you have anything as far as your own privilege? No. Um, Mr. Harvey? Just getting ready for winter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, CFO Grita. Nothing. Okay, thank you. All right, so let's go back to 13 and uh, resol uh, resolve the pursuance of sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act. Council go to the community and close the meeting to the public. This is illegal. Legal, yeah. Okay, uh, moved by Councilor Bobbick, seconded by Councilor Powell. All in favor? It's carried. We are in camera. So uh, we have a meeting tentatively scheduled for the uh, Legacy Committee to meet with the uh, Council Committee on Thursday um, the 19th at 5 p.m. Correct? Okay. We're trying. All right. So how we make up with that? All right. Result of this uh, committee, committee of the whole meeting be now adjourned at 8.15 p.m. Moved by Councilor Medwood, seconded by you can or can be the whole, sorry, yeah. council meeting. Sorry. Can of the whole meeting now adjourned? Town. This is a regular town. Oh, I'm reading the resolution. Yes, sir. Um, resolve that this uh, regular meeting of council now be adjourned at 8.15 p.m. Thank you. Uh, moved by Councilor Medwood, second by Councilor Powell. All in favor? It's carried.